At the beginning of the 15th century, China was the leading power of the seas. In 1405, the Chinese Emperor Yongle sent a huge fleet to the sea. According to historical records, it consisted of about 300 ships, including more than 60 powerful treasure ships, fully loaded with valuable goods of the time. According to many sources, they were the largest sailing ships that had ever sailed the seas. The Chinese had accumulated a wealth of knowledge about navigation. They created the first accurate maps and advanced techniques such as the compass and celestial navigation. For centuries they sailed on these ancient trade routes. From the East China Sea to Indonesia to India, the expeditions even led them as far as East Africa long before the European discoverers landed here. But are the ancient sources credible? In recent years, wrecks were found showing the story of the Silk Road of the Sea in a new light. Bilitung, Indonesia, now with its white beaches and clear water a paradise for tourists, it is a crossroads of ancient trade routes between the East and West. The narrow sea between the island makes it a real bottleneck, which all ships had to pass on their way. Reefs and shoals make this area dangerous waters, and a sudden storm or typhoon could mean the end of an entire fleet. The German diver Fred Doberfuhl made sensational discoveries here. 2005 Doberfuhl dived wreck, to date the oldest in Asia. Scientific tests have shown more than thousand years it has lain on the seabed. On board a valuable cargo, goods from China and Arabia. But then the sensation. In one of five other wrecks from the 5th dynasties, the German research team found European amphorae. Were the Romans the founders of the maritime Silk Road? Es gibt viele Hinweise, dass die Seidenstraße durchaus von den Römern gegründet wurde. In Rom, Rom bestand ein, ein großer Bedarf an Luxusgütern, an Seide, dass man einfach gezwungen war, diese Seide nach Rom zu bringen. Und da bot sich der Seeweg an, dass man mit diesen Schiffen große Warenmengen transportieren konnte und äh, mit diesen Schiffen äh, die Seide nach Europa bringen konnte. The trade links of those early years were more extensive than was previously thought. Goods, ideas and techniques exchanged from east to west. Among the most valuable trading goods were silk and porcelain, hugely popular in Europe, but only the Chinese knew the secret of its manufacture. And also with other groundbreaking inventions, the Chinese were pioneers. Even the paper, in China its production had been already perfected in the second century. Arab traders brought it to Europe. Without the invention of paper, there would have been neither the printing press nor the modern era in Europe. The heyday of China on the world's oceans came to an abrupt end in 1433. A successor of the Emperor Yongde forbade the high shipping. The huge junks were scrapped. The construction of vessels of more than three masts were declared a capital crime. Centuries old knowledge was destroyed. The Ming went into self-imposed isolation. Durch das Zurückziehen, durch diese Abschottung im 15. Jahrhundert, wurden diese Fahrten dann aber leider Gottes nicht mehr weitergeführt. Und so war ein, ein Raum offen, der dann durch die europäischen Entdecker ausgefüllt werden konnte. Less than 70 years later, the Europeans appeared on the Asian seas, far inferior in many ways, and they took over the trade in arms. Even today we can see the traces of European sailors in the world and the large container ships that link the world satellite control these days still sail the old routes of the Silk Road of the Sea.